at our saviors this morning. I am Pastor Kiri. Pastor Jeff is our visitation pastor and he is leading worship this morning. We're so glad to have you here as well, Pastor Jeff. If you are new to our saviors, a special welcome to you. We would love to connect with you. We have connection cards that are in the pew pockets, uh, in the pews right in front of you. You can fill that out and place it in the, the baskets on the stands. If you are worshiping online, a special welcome to you. Uh, if you're new, you could fill out a connection card on our website under Connect. Well, uh, we are excited to be back at it. That is our sermon series, uh, our second of our series today. And today is our first day of kids ministry groups meeting. So uh, we're super excited about the kids ministry rooms. Uh, we've been able to kind of shift and expand the space. And we're excited that kids get to go use those rooms today. So uh, it should be a fun day. You can see your announcement sheet for lots of activities coming up, um, especially including on the back, it is all of our children, youth, and family ministries. There is still plenty of time to register and take part. If you or uh, you know someone who could be part of this, please share the information with them. Well, those are uh, all the announcements I'm going to say out loud, so I invite you to stand as you're able. And at this time, we'll share God's peace with one another from our places with a smile or a wave. Please remain standing as we sing our opening song, Won't Stop Now. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. In every season, your grace has been enough. The best is yet to come. The cross before me, my hope on things above. And in you, Jesus, the best is yet to come. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord. Your presence is an open door, so come now, Lord, like never And it won't stop now I know a breakthrough is coming By faith I see a miracle My God made me a promise And it won't stop now is an open door. Um, we can come to him with anything at any time, and he's always available. So together as a church, let's bless God. And blessing God means we're not adding thing, anything to God um, like he does when he blesses us. We're praising God. So let's praise God together as we sing this next song.
sanctuary. Bless God in the fields of plenty. Bless God in the darkest valley. Every chance I get, I bless your name. Bless God when my hands are empty. Bless God with the praise that costs me. Bless God when nobody's watching. Every chance I get, I bless your name. place our hope and our confidence in you. We bless your name today. Help us to keep our focus on you, even in the darkest valley. Give us courage to step away from things that tear us down and gather us close to you as we go about our daily lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, you may be seated, and it's time for the children's message. So kids who are here, Come on up, you can have a seat right on the carpet. It's good to see you. Oh, and if you have offering, there's the milk can. Leisha's got one. You can put your offering in there. Lauren's got one. If you have offering, you can kind of spread out. Good morning. Okay, well, here's a question. Are you ready? Have you ever run a race? Raise your hand if you've run a race. Many of you have run a race. Okay, um, I used to run a lot when I was younger, but I can't anymore because of my silly knee. Have you run? But my friend Sean, she runs, and she runs a lot of races. In fact, she runs marathons. Who knows how long a marathon is? What do you think? How many miles? Three? More. Higher. How long is a marathon? Higher. We're getting closer, though. 26.2 miles. You are right. 26.2 miles. Um, so my friend Sean is getting ready to run the New York City Marathon in just over a month. And yesterday she ran 18 miles as part of getting ready. That's a lot, isn't it? So she let me borrow some of her medals that she has gotten for marathons. These are pretty cool, aren't they? Um, here, you can pass some of these around. You can touch them, pass it to the next person. She had a whole bunch of them. Take that, take a look. You can pass it around. Two, one for a minute from Twin Cities. That's from Chicago. She ran the Marine Corps Marathon. This one's a half marathon, but I thought it was super cool. Yeah. Someone did one. All right, keep passing them around so people can touch them too. So here's the thing. She, she has these medals, and... Uh, of someone after one of the marathons saw her wearing the medal and they said to her, oh my gosh, did you win the race? <laughs> and she kind of smiled and she laughed and she said, well, I wasn't the first runner to finish the race, but everyone who finished 
the race was a winner and received a prize. So even though she didn't come in first after running that far, she earned these medals and it's really memorable to her. There's a story in the Bible about someone whose name was Paul. We call him the Apostle Paul. And he writes a letter telling people in the church at the town of Philippi about the joy of being a follower of Jesus. He told them that being a follower of Jesus is like running a race and winning the prize that Jesus has for us. And Paul said this, I don't mean that I'm exactly what God wants me to be. I haven't reached that goal, but I continue to look to what Jesus wants me to do. And I remember this one thing. I don't focus on what is past, but I keep looking ahead to the prize of what God has in store for me. So that prize that Paul was talking about, it's knowing that God loves us and will never leave us. That's our promise on this earth and for God's people who live with God in heaven. Well, let's say a prayer. Will you repeat after me? And then you can bring me the medals that you have, and it'll be time to head out to kids' ministry. Repeat after me. Dear God, help us to run the race and claim the prize of Jesus' love. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, if you are going to kids' ministry, you can go out the center doors. There will be helpers there to help you find your way. Parents will come pick you up from your rooms this morning. Thanks for coming up. What? It's so great to see all these kids in worship and coming up for children's message. Um, we look forward them to hearing about how it went this morning. Well, our reading for today is from Philippians, uh, Paul's letter to those in Philippi, and we are reading from the third chapter. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind, and if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we had our uh, first night of confirmation this past Wednesday for new students, um, especially sixth graders who are starting confirmation and their parents this week. And then this morning, our kids are heading out to their kids' ministry groups. We have four groups that will meet for the first time. And most school kids and teachers are about two weeks into the new school year. And for many families, we're starting to feel like we are back at it. The school year routine with its blessings and challenges is on its way. At the same time, this time of year provides an opportunity, whether your calendar has seen a bunch of changes or not. Fall can be a time to consider resetting around different priorities. And that's why we chose this two-week series called Back At It, Prioritizing Our Relationship with Christ. Last week, the theme was reset. And through the story of Jesus with his disciple Peter, we saw that after all that had happened between Jesus and Peter, it was Jesus who sought out the disciples. And in particular, Peter, again, and again. And we remember that it is especially in the in-between times, on the cusp of something new but not there yet, that Jesus came to the disciples as he comes to us. 
Well, today's theme is back at it, repurpose. What is repurposing? Well, it means taking something we already have, maybe something that no longer works or is no longer useful, and turning it into something new, something with purpose. Well, thanks to my ever useful resource called the internet, I want to show you some of the most interesting repurposed items that I found. Are you ready? All right, here's number one. <laughs> this is a pop bottle boat. This guy said he asked his wife if he could get a boat, and she bought him 10 cases of Sprite instead. <laughs> um, next one. How about this one? It's a little DIY project, a ladder turned into a bookshelf. The notes uh, to this one said, you could choose to paint the ladder first, which I think that would probably be a good idea. All right, now to the little more zany, a sofa from a bathtub. Or how about this, a handbag from interlocked soda can tops. I think someone has more free time than I do. But you got to admire the effort on that one. How about this one? A mailbox from an old computer tower. I do admire the ingenuity of that one. And then this one is the most cringeworthy, I think. <laughs> this is supposedly a working toilet from a motor scooter. Uh, and finally, I think this one is my favorite, turning an old TV console into a fish tank. Well, what might repurposing mean in our faith lives as followers of Christ? Thankfully, we don't have to turn bathtubs into sofas or motor scooters into toilets. Our approach in our faith life can be different. It might be reconsidering what ideas or thoughts or practices are no longer useful in a growing relationship with Christ. And it might mean seeking out a new practice or purpose or a way of serving. Our scripture reading today is about the Apostle Paul in Philippians. And in Philippians 3, as we heard, Paul speaks at length about his confidence when it comes to his faith. He writes, But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. The what lies behind is what Paul lays out in the first 11 verses of this chapter. He talks all about his accomplishments, his pedigree, his standing among his peers, and he realizes that in the light of Jesus, none of that matters. When we get back at it, it's important to remember that all these accolades the world values don't matter nearly as much as we think they do. All that matters is Jesus and our identity in Jesus as a claimed and loved child of God. Not only does Paul show his, us his confidence in Christ alone, but he also does demonstrate great humility. Paul doesn't claim to have it all figured out. And in his recognition of that he is still pursuing the goal of knowing God in Christ, it spurs him on. He says, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Instead of falling back into who he was before Jesus, Paul sets that life aside and follows Jesus. So by the standards of this world, Paul had it made. He was successful. His family were Roman citizens. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. He was distinguished with a standing in his day. Today, maybe Paul would be uh, upper class from a prominent family with a distinguished pedigree. He may have gone to an Ivy League and graduated with honors, now finding himself a successful CEO, presumably living the dream. But after meeting Jesus, Paul realized what truly matters in this life and that all of that stuff didn't matter compared to the greatness of knowing Jesus. Sometimes it's easy to drift in our lives of faith because of the pull of our pursuits in the world. When that happens, it's helpful to keep in mind these words of Paul so that you know you can always get back at it 
and repurpose yourself as a follower of Jesus. I heard a story about a fundraiser uh, that was shared in the book, The Soul of Money, and I think it gets at our theme for today. So this uh, fundraiser, this person raised money for an international hunger nonprofit, The Hunger Project. And she tells of the story of going to accept the biggest gift this nonprofit had ever received in its history. She flew to Chicago and went to the CEO's office in a huge fancy skyscraper. There was serious opulence and power on display. She felt like a lowly fundraiser there to pick up a check. Despite the generosity of the gift, the executive of this massive company was gruff and dismissive. He barely looked at her, as if this important donation and this woman was a nuisance in his very busy, important day. He didn't seem to care about solving hunger, or her, or her organization, or the people they served, and she was quickly dismissed. So she took the check and flew back to New York. That same evening, she was asked to present to a congregation in their Harlem church basement. These were not wealthy people or a wealthy church. The heavy rain outside was finding its way into this basement space. But the people were excited by the work of the nonprofit and excited for how they could participate. They deeply cared for hungry people struggling around the world. After she gave her talk, she asked them for their support And one by one, folks came forward with their gifts to feed the world. No one took out a checkbook to write an impressive check, just cash, just what they had to give. These interactions could not have been more different. The author goes on to share. In one, what was lacking was love, care, and even interest, but a lot of money. In the other, there was love overflowing and abundant, along with money, but not a lot. The dichotomy for the author was stark and profound. Her organization ended up returning the check to the food conglomerate with a thanks but no thanks letter. They said that when the company was ready to engage in the mission of the charity with authentic interest and care, they would gladly welcome this company's charitable giving. Fast forward, years later, that same executive who was so dismissive joined the board of the organization and became a real advocate, giving and raising far more money than what had previously been returned. And he said, that his change began when that check was returned. It had never occurred to him that a nonprofit, a charity, would turn down money like that. It never occurred to him that someone would value authentic relationship, integrity, and love over winning in the world. What a profound story about returning the check. I I so admire the courage of this organization to say thanks, but no thanks. As a leader of an organization, you wonder, hmm, what would I have done in that same situation? How about you? If someone handed you a massive check for a cause you cared about deeply, how much would you care if they gave it out of their own cynicism and selfishness? Everywhere we look, in this country that is very well off in comparison to the rest of the world, we sometimes focus only on what is missing. We focus on how we don't have enough. From the moment we wake up in the morning, we groan about not getting enough sleep, not having enough time, not having enough health, not having anything to wear even as we have a full closet. We all have our stories of not enough. I'm excited that next week we will start a series called The Impossible Promise of Enough, where impossible becomes possible as we focus on God's generous provision for us in so many ways. I think it will be a very hopeful and purposeful series. So today, as we get back at it, 
May you remember, as Paul did, that you have been claimed by God, that your life is caught up in Christ. You have been called by the God who created light from darkness and raises the dead to new life. May it give you confidence and courage in the hope of Jesus Christ as you consider your purpose in the world. Let us pray. Dear God, keep us steadfast in your promises so that whether we are experiencing joy or sorrow in the present, our confidence in you and hope for the future remains strong. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Please join me in a word of prayer. God, as we get back at it, help us to trust you most of all. May our trust in Christ Jesus give strength, courage, and a comforting peace for all that lies ahead. We pray for the earth and all its inhabitants, protect lands at risk of wildfire, and heal dying forests where fire brings destruction, raise up new growth, guide us in tending precarious ecosystems. We pray for those who govern nations, tribes, and cities. Open them to the cries of people in need. Direct them in shaping policies that prioritize the health and well-being of all who struggle with hunger and housing insecurity. We pray for teachers, professors, librarians, school administrators, staff, and all who support the education of young people. Sustain them as they shape learning communities that are vibrant and caring. We pray for children of all ages in their learning. And we pray for all who are ill or who are lonely or anxious, and for all who grieve. Hear our prayers today for Santbar, Jeanette, Holly, Karen, Sandy, Sandra, Dolores, Mert, Kelly, Pastor Margie, Juvina, and David. Bring comfort and care to families who are grieving loved ones they have recently lost. And we hold in prayer the family of Holly Gifro Boss and the family of Lowell Efterfield upon their loss. All these things and for whatever else you know that we may need, we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we have a photo we wanted to show this morning. Um, this is one of the projects that happened last week as part of our Sunday of serving. People uh, helped to assemble snack kits. And they were taken that day down to uh, those who coordinate the sandwich project. And uh, together, these kits, along with food, hygiene items, and socks, went to, uh, were taken to a shelter. And people received them and were able to use them that day and that week. So uh, we give thanks that we were able to be part of that ministry. If uh, you are interested in serving in some way this year for confirmation on Wednesdays every single week there's going to be some kind of service project happening and we'd love to have adults who want to come alongside kids who can help be part of those uh, or any other kind of serving we'd love for you to get involved you can see Leisha or um, Lisa RK and they can help point you in the right direction well uh, our gifts together make this kind of ministry and all our ministries possible. Uh, if you are here today in worship, there are various ways that you can give. You can place your offering in the baskets that are on the stands by the doors uh, as you leave today. You can also always mail in a check, use the QR code, or give through the website. And today we are blessed to have a musical offering. About a month ago, Laura gave me, um, sent me this song, um, what she's about to sing, and I fell in love with it so much because of the, um, the message that it has. Um, I am a person who I should on myself, that's what uh, my therapist always says, don't should on yourself. Um, I always say, I should do this, I should do this, I should be this way, I should, like, the world is telling us to do things differently, but the chorus in this song says, the truth is, we are our father's child, we make him proud, we make him smile, we are made in the image of a perfect king, he looks at me and wouldn't change a thing, and it just, it really spoke to me, and I know it will speak to you, so uh, thank you, Laura. Enjoy. How many times can you hear the same lie before you start to believe it? The enemy 
keeps whispering to me Swear these days it's all that I'm hearing Used to know who I was Now I look in the mirror And I'm not so sure Lord, I don't want to listen to the lies anymore The truth is Thank you so much for that message and song this morning. Very much appreciated and very lovely. Just a moment, we'll have the opportunity to share in the gift that our Lord gives to us, the gift of himself in bread and wine. It's important to know, especially if you're a visitor with us today, that everyone is welcome here at our Savior's to receive the Lord's Supper, and you're welcome and I'll give a few more instructions about that in just a moment, but all are welcome, shall we pray. Lord God, we thank you for the way you bless our lives in so many different ways, providing us with food and clothing, home, family, daily work, everything we need from day to day. And through our offering, we return a portion of that to you, to this, to be used through this congregation in this community and throughout the world. Pray for your blessing upon the gifts that we have, re we have given this morning. Now be with us as we receive you in the gift you give of yourself in bread and wine. Through Christ our Lord we pray, amen. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Just a few words of instruction in the way that we distribute communion this morning here at Our Saviors. If you're coming forward, you will see the servers ready at the stations that will be in front. They'll give you a nod and then you can proceed forward to the stations. Center sections, if you come up the center aisle and uh, go to the first station where we will give you the wafer, proceed to the next station and dip that either into the wine, which is the larger section, or the smaller section has grape juice. And then you can return by the side aisles. Those of you who are on the side sections, if you can come up on the wall side and then return by those side aisles as well. If you have someone with you that does not yet take communion, please have them come forward for a blessing. If you need gluten-free wafers, those are available at all the stations. There are more details in the announcement sheet about communion if you need a little more information. So for those communing in place or at home, hear these words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. I'll invite those who are assisting this morning if you can come forward at this time. Throne of that 
majesty, the Father's will complete. He reigns in victory. Sing hallelujah to the King. He is worthy to I invite you to stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have received, strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, in this meal we have been fed with your goodness and united by your presence. Send us now to share your gracious love with all people. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
in peace. Serve the Lord. We yeah. will. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. One, two, three, four.